so I thought it would only be fair to let everybody know where I am coming from because I'm always telling everyone to come together and come from a place of love. So I'm Alqa, but that's not a name that the older generation called me growing up. I, I don't think I've even really ever heard my father call me Alqa. I have many names and my names have different responsibilities and roles to community members and people in my family. But all of these names have a couple things in common in the way of being and how I do things and look at the world. And the ultimate one is love. And that's not love just for people close to me, but that's love for everything and everyone all creation all living and when i say all living it's not just people it's also the waters because the water is very much alive and it's also for the lands and the animals because they're all alive everything is alive so when i tell people to come from a place of love i literally mean to love everything to find your place in who you are and what your responsibility responsibilities are to everything and come with an open mind and an open heart and a place where you will not hurt each other or anything because if we do we come like we become stuck in situations like this with a climate crisis, a pandemic, children getting killed and all that other sad, sad stuff. So my foundation has been built based on a lot of different knowledges and teachings from a very old generation that have now passed that ensured that I had the proper tools and the foundation to know who I am and to be able to love unconditionally and to speak for the ones that cannot speak themselves for themselves. And this doesn't only include people, but everything around us, all living. And as a child, Everyone always ensured that I was good, I was well, that I was living into who I am and they held me accountable and they also encouraged me to live into the names that have been given and gifted to me. And even though I am half Qalunaq, half white, I actually didn't know the white culture really till I was in my teens because my Qalunaq mother wasn't really allowed to teach me the Qalunaq ways, even the music, her classical music and everything. And the reason being was the older generation was afraid that my foundation wouldn't be as solid when I grow up because they knew how fast their ways of being was being ruined by the colonial system and the elders understood my family the older generation understood that one day all of the knowledge so the first peoples of these lands knowledge would be able to save everything especially in this climate crisis that we are in right now and I come from a very strong Inuk-rooted family. I spent a lot of time on the land. There were a lot of times where I just had to sit and just watch and everything and do things, a lot of things. We were not lazy, that's for sure, especially like with how kids are just inside today. That was not our upbringing was outside no matter what the weather was 
And the reason for that was to ensure that that connection was built. So when I tell people to come from a place of love and to start speaking up for the lands and the animals and everything else and to start working together, it's because I truly believe that we can. I truly believe that we can because I know this is not a life that we would choose to live if we knew what an absolute loving society was. I know that because we are not built that way. All this greed and everything is taught to us. And it's taken over everything and ruining everything. So that's a little bit about who I am and that's all I am going to share about myself, which will bring me to my next point. My family was colonized by the Liberal Party and it was actually our current Prime Minister's father that started entertaining the idea that Inuit needed to be assimilated and cut from the land so the resources could be extracted so Canadians may benefit not Inuit but Canadians and I'm going to argue it's not really Canadians but it's big corporations the people that actually run everything, if you think about it. And because of that colonization process, my family has lived through a lot and have overcome a lot. Things that are very, un you can't imagine. <laughs> and they have had, of course, a rippling effect because everything has a rippling effect to everything, not just connection and relationship towards human beings, but also everything that you are in, like even the air, because <laughs> the air is living. So when looking at all of that, and then looking at where we are today as a quote country, you can really start seeing no wonder we are in a climate crisis and a pandemic and not going out on the land and you know when I was a child I was always told that the land can heal you not only physically but also mentally and spiritually and that's very important to remember and practice if we want to survive but how do you get there? Again, it has to come from a place of love. And that is what has been removed from each and every one of us, it seems like, in society or the majority. Which now will bring me to my next point on this concept and this idea of Nunatukavut. And I'm bringing this up because this is ongoing colonization this is ongoing oppression. This is what upholds oppression, colonization, and extraction from the lands. And if this whole land claim of Nunatukavut, and I have a really hard time saying that because it's not rooted in the Inuktitut language, it just sounds like they tried saying Nunatukavut, and instead they just call it Nunatukavut. But now they are claiming that they are Inuit. And you know, I have never heard of the people from Nunatukavut. I have never been told and I can't connect the dots. But this supposed land claim is actually on very rich soils that have a lot of resources. So I can understand why the Canadian state would say that Nunatukavut is a indigenous sovereign land to get away with the whole extraction as they have done in the Arctic and through all of these treaties and everything, this whole idea of consultation. 
con consultations with Inuit. And that doesn't happen. But I will not get into that right now. But this is how they justify everything. This is how they justify ruining everything and hurting everything and putting our futures on the line on the line our children and their children etc and they make it okay through this justice system and this whole idea of what they consider to be what because they have the ultimate power I'm not okay with this Someone that claims to be Inuk from Nunatukavut recently said that they live a very traditional lifestyle but yet blames the seals for the ruining of the ecosystem. This is not Inuk way of thinking. I don't I don't know where she is coming from. And I'm not asking anybody from this quote settlement to prove who they are. We all come from somewhere. We are all somebody. We are all in this together. But what I'm very concerned about is if this land claim goes through, they're going to start popping up everywhere and justify the extraction and the continued oppression that everyone faces and add to our climate crisis that is affecting all of us. Because again, this is not just an Inuk problem. This is not just a Inuqaqasimayuk problem. This is everybody's problem. <clears throat> and, you know, as a child, everyone used to tell me that if you see something's wrong, you got to try and change it to make it better for everyone. And how do you do that? Well, you start using everything that is around you. So what does that mean? Well, you learn the English language. You learn how the system works. And then you go on their playing field and you do things their way because that is the only way they will listen. Which is why I will be challenging the Nunatukavut land claim because there is no way I'm just going to sit and watch Inuit get hurt and our knowledges get devalued and the lands get hurt. Which brings to this idea of coming together. Because imagine if we all came together and we said something about Nunatukavut or said something about maybe you should be putting those people on the streets begging for basic needs that their bodies need. If we made enough noise, we could change the world for the better, out of love. And that's not to say that love is just rainbows and unicorns all the time. Love means looking at everything as a whole and thinking about everything. And when you start thinking like that from a place of not being entrenched in it but coming away from it and looking at it as a whole, you can really start to see what kind of change you can make together. And that's all I wanted to say. <laughs> I hope everybody has a fantastic day.